Everybody's screaming fake news. Are you screaming fake news these days? Do you say that's fake, this is fake? Do you believe what you see in the newspaper, on the internet, especially the internet? Do you believe any of the stories that come out anymore about any incident, anything international, local, or national? Hey, I'm Chuck Kewen. I'm coming to you 91818. It is September. It is a beautiful day here in Fort Mill, South Carolina, coming to you 1235 p.m. And I want to talk to you about how to be sincere in helping others. Now, I opened up with the whole fake news, a fake story, because fake news doesn't just happen. It comes from people that got an agenda. And so there's a reason that people are not sincere, that we're hidden, that we hold back, that we're not really open, that we really just kind of closet ourselves. Now, some people have managed to be very real and very open and honest, but those are very far and few between, to be honest with you. And I think most of us really live in somewhat of a little bit of a hypocritical world or maybe a very big hypocritical world. We have our own personal double standards. We have our own things. Now, we're going to get into why, why that is. We're going to get a solution to that. But let me, just, let me just talk on the first point. Now, when I say in how to be sincere in helping others, as a network marketer, what you're looking to do is to help someone else and help someone else find the solution to their particular problem. For instance, if as a network marketer, I specifically help net, other network marketers find a better way to prospect, find leads, and get sales by using online strategies. Now that's my, my particular niche. I also have a health and wellness business that we work with, same thing, online. So, what, what, but in, in, in doing that, what really happens is I wind up taking the insincerity out of the picture a lot of times. And I'll tell you the reason why this is a better way. We'll, we'll develop that. We'll, we'll probably deal with that a little bit at the end. But so we're talking about sincerity. It's like how many people you meet for the first time you feel like, eh, I don't trust this person. I don't know this person. I'm not sure I even like this person. Or maybe you've already heard about that person. You meet them in real life and go, gosh, they're not what, the, what I heard about them. They're way better or whatever. Or people put on false fronts. Now, do you ever do that? I know I have. And I would think, for myself, one of my biggest struggles, probably one of my biggest battles in this industry and in this business and life in general is absolutely being sincere. Because all of us have pride in our heart. All of us have an ego that needs to be checked in at the door when we're with other people. Now that's not to say, it, it, the opposite of pride is not beating yourself up and being self-abased and just putting yourself down. That's, that's false humility. What we're looking for is true humility, someone who knows who they are, which is my first point then your identity. You need to know who you are and why you're here on this planet and you need to know that you have created value. And when you have that assurance in your heart and in your mind and your belief about who you are and you have that created value understood, then that is your foundation for doing everything. And that brings the element then of sincerity. You don't think of yourself as better than anybody else, but if you don't keep you putting yourself, putting yourself down as I'm an idiot, I can't do anything right, and that kind of mentality. That you have the self-assurance and the self-confidence that comes from without, that you've brought down within, and your mind is telling you you can't. Now you have the mental engagement and the mental dialogue that I am somebody because I have created value. I'm here for a purpose. I don't always know exactly what it is in every second, every moment, but I know I have a divine purpose. I know I have a calling. And every one of you out there has a divine calling. Every one of you. Nobody's an accident. I don't care what your background is. I don't care who's hurt you or who you've hurt or what you've done or what's happened to you. I don't know how many times you tried your network marketing business to succeed only to wind up failing again. You have to realize that you have a purpose and you have a creative value. Get your identity solidified. Get that belief in your heart and in your mind and in your mindset and in your language and in your dialogue and your self-talk and all those things. It's like somebody said, I, 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 heard, I heard a speaker say recently that being thorough and being researching is good. Being analytical is not. Now, I'm not going to get into all that because I don't know everything about what he was trying to say. But the basic gist of what he was trying to say was when you overanalyze, then you start talking yourself out of things. You get start talking yourself, yourself out of your identity because you say, okay, I have created value. I'm a network marker. I'm this, I'm that. I, this is what I do. And then you start saying, oh, I didn't do that right. I didn't do this right. I messed up on this. I didn't talk to the person. I didn't follow up. I don't know. I, you, you start all those things start coming into your head. You start replaying over the conversations that you should have had where you messed up. You start replaying in your head about 
what you didn't do about maybe you slipped up maybe you were you're lazy maybe you were procrastinating on something maybe you were supposed to follow up with people and you didn't maybe you're very disorganized you you name it there's a whole list of things where we self-sabotage ourselves but where it all starts is belief about who we are and our identity now I used to say well I'm not a XYZ you know that this particular company I'm with I used to think I'm a rep for this company and I realized well, that's not really it because first of all it's in health and wellness and I'm not a health and wellness geek I'm not, a, I'm, not a, I'm not a nut about health and wellness. I love the workout, I love to eat right, but my point is, I'm not an expert in it, the company is, and so it's like, okay, well, what about the business plan? Well, they got a great compensation plan, it loves it, works well, we love it. But the problem is, still, that's not who I am, that's not my identity. Well, I'm a network marketer, okay, but what is beyond that? I'm not just a network marketer, I represent the industry, but what do I really represent? Well, I'm me. I'm who I am first before I'm a network marketer. So that's my branding, and we'll get into branding another time. I know we've talked about that a little bit in the past, but that's, that's who you are. Who you are is really what your product is. And if you don't know who you are, how can you brand yourself? So you've got to get that identity. You've got to know who you are, why you're here, and what your purpose is. The second point is honesty. How to be sincere is, being, is simply being honest. When you make a mistake, own up to it. Be responsible for yourself. Be accountable to other people. Now, accountability can be overdone. It can be where, like, oh, I got to go talk to this guy because I messed up again. I've been in religious circles where accountability is almost like, uh, is almost like bullying because you feel like, oh, man, I really messed up. It's like I got to keep track of my, my sins and my errors and my faults and my failures for the week. So I, the next time I get together with this group of people, I got to confess all these things. Now, I believe in confessing your faults, confessing your weaknesses, and, and, and openly bringing those things up. There, there, is that, there is that that's true. But the idea is not to do it so you can clear your conscience. The idea is simply to be honest so you can correct those mistakes, so you can move forward, so you can get into a better level of understanding your identity and the reality and really being sincere so you can help people. For instance, I don't have to get into politics very much to know that we're very suspicious of politicians. I'm sure you would agree with that. We see something online. We see a headline. And now, after so much what we is t- are told is fake news, I'm really wondering sometimes about stories, how stories are really reported, if they only tell you just enough facts. They're facts, but they're just enough just to manipulate or persuade you towards a certain conclusion or towards a certain proposition. Here's the problem with that. I'll give you a very famous illustration one of my history professors mentioned in college. He said, back in the days of the Cold War, when the United States and the Soviet Union were really, really, really big time at, at, uh, you know, after, after Korea War, at, you know, those, those years, probably in the you know, late 50s, whatever, that uh, the, the Russians um, advertised uh, the results of an international car race. Now, the facts were absolutely 100% accurate. But now listen, listen to this. This is how, the, how their news agency reported the race. International car race, Russians come in second place, United States finishes second to last, next to last. And so they told the facts. Now I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you a secret behind that story. They told the facts. They were absolutely 100% accurate. But there's a lot of stuff that they left out. And there's a lot of stuff that they just omitted in that whole story. The fact what they admitted was that the way it made it sound like this international car race, like there were dozens and dozens of cars and the Russians almost won. The Americans, ah, they practically came in last. Well, that's true because there were only two cars in that race, the Soviet Union car and the Russian car, uh, and and the American car. The Americans won the race, which means they came in next to last. The Soviet Union's car, they lost the race, which means they came in second. It's about how you report the facts. So when you're being honest, you need to be honest about your faults and failures. You also need to be honest to people because you don't want to give the idea to all your people, your prospects, your clients, everybody out there that, oh, hey, you know, I, I'm really going to make lots of money with this thing and you can really do this and I don't mess them. Yeah, no. You have to be honest about yourself, honest about your company, honest about your compensation plan, honest about your products, honest about the leaders. You don't have to put them down. You don't have to say, well, we're kind of got all these faults. No, we can say, look, I don't like saying we're the number one this, we got the best this and the best that. I don't go that way. Look, I said, I'm not an expert in the industry and in these products. They've worked for me. This is my story. This is my testimony. This is what they've done for me. And I, you just need to try them and see what it can do for you. The compensation plan, well, I'll help you. We're going to work together to make this thing work if, that, if that's what you're interested in your business. So just simply being honest about 
about who you are, being honest, just being open and honest. That will that will bring about sincerity because sincerity is not something you try to do. I believe that's a byproduct of you simply being, knowing your identity, number one, and number two, just being honest, being open and honest, being transparent, saying, hey, oh, I, I messed up, guys. I was supposed to tell you about this. I, I'm going to be honest here. Until about 15 minutes before I got on this, I had no subject. I absolutely had no subject, which is really weird because the last time I talked, I think, on Sunday night, I said, I have no problem coming up with content. I got content. And I'm like, going two days, like, oh, crap. <laughs> Sorry. It's like, I didn't have anything. And I realized, okay, well, I just have to be honest. I just have to be open and honest here. So the reality is that's what I am. I'm being open and honest. To tell you. I didn't have a topic. I didn't have any content. I didn't have anything. Let me get this thing off the screen here. My wife and I were going to do something about how to handle interruptions. She was going to call me on the phone and she was going to walk in the room. And, you know, it's lunchtime for us, getting ready to eat, uh, you know, an awesome meal that she's preparing in a, in, a, in a few minutes. But that would have been kind of staged. It would have been really natural and that would have been very honest either. So, but the reality was I didn't have anything. It was like, okay, God, what do I do? What, do I, what am I supposed to do? How do I, how do I just like do this? And I realized, well, just be honest and tell people, ta-da, I'm just kind of winging it right now. And I am. But these are just my life experiences, and you just share life experiences with people, and sincerity becomes a byproduct because people want to buy from somebody that's real. They want to know, oh, they're, you're just like me, and I'm just like you. And they don't feel the pressure having to try to perform and try to be just like you, and oh, he's so professional. He just pulls these Facebook Lives off out of the hat. Is it? No. This is because I've done so much Facebook Lives, and this is because I'm not afraid of the camera, because I've done this a lot. This is because I've already been through, been there, and done that, and so many different things. You've already got it in your mental encyclopedia, in your experiential encyclopedia. You've got something you can get up and talk about. The last point, and it's a little floppy, I mean, it's not absolutely clear, but you got to go into a conversation or a situation with a prospect or, or whatever, You've got to go into it with no hidden agendas. You can just say, say, look, I know you're sitting there thinking this is the pyramid scheme. I'm trying to get you into some kind of you know, crazy business thing, and you're going to have the tons of products sitting in your garage. I don't know how your company does things, but you know, our company, we don't have that. Everything's online. We don't have to, people don't have to buy a bunch and try to resell it or anything like the old days. It's not, it's not that way at all. But I don't want to go into a conversation and say, well, if you just do this, and you, you get two, and they get two, and blah, blah, blah. Well, th those are true things. And it can happen, but I want to teach you a better way. I want to teach you a way that's going to have grace and elegance to it. I want to teach you a way that doesn't have the hidden agendas. It doesn't have that level of insincerity that you're trying to really help the person. But in essence, in your mind and your background and, and, and that voice in your head is really saying, man, I hope this person gets on my product, gets my team, gets on my team because I really need that bonus. I need that rank advancement. I, I, need, the, I need to, you know, whatever you pay, pay our, our particular company's uh, uh, payout plan it has, it has cycles. I hope I, I hope I cycle again. And that, you know, it's like, man, you can't look at that person and, and, and you got dollar signs in the eyes because I think they're going to read through that and they're going to realize, oh, you're just trying to get me. When you try to give to somebody, which is why we teach and preach constantly over value, value, and more value, excellent, excellent content. So whether you're writing a blog, you're posting an ad online, or you're doing a Facebook Live, you need to have value, and it needs to be free. Now, at some point, you need to be compensated for it. But you're, lo you're out to build a know, like, and trust principle. You're out to build an audience of people that know you, that like you, and that trust you, and want to do business with you. Those are the kind of people that you really feel like, okay, I can go into a store, I can go into this restaurant, and I know the manager, I know the waitresses, whatever, and you just have a good connection there. And they give you good service, and there's just a really good relationship, because that is what it comes down to. Sincerity brings about solid relationships. So recap, know your identity, know who you are, so you don't have to struggle with being anything other than who you actually are. You don't have to try to pretend to bring that pretentious spirit into it. And just be honest about your successes and honest about your f mistakes and failures. And last, don't go into a situation, conversation, a Facebook or a written thing, spoken thing. Don't go into those things with any kind of a hidden agenda. Just go in there and say, what can I help this person? How can I help this person? What can I help them? How can I help them get from point A to point B? Point B, how can I help them get out of the pain that they're experiencing right now? If this has brought value today, if you found very a, a lot of value to this, please just drop me a note in the comments below. Let me know that you found value. If you want to know how you can take the pain out of your life of finding leads, prospects, and sales for your network marketing business, please, 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 
I can help you with that. I can give you some free material to show you how you can find people without chasing them, without cold calling, without annoying all your friends and family yet again. Thanks for hopping on. I appreciate you. If you watched on a replay, just put hashtag replay. If it gave you value, hashtag value. I want some more info. I want to know how to, chase, how to not have to chase people, but to build my business with sincerity, honesty, and no hidden agendas. Thanks. We'll see you Thursday, same time, 1235. God bless. Thanks for hopping on. See you next time.